But there's a second reality to Golgotha as well that the Armenians were very quick to pick up on and to joyfully incorporate into their architecture. Its reality is subtle, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's subtle, but it's powerful. And this is part of its root. When the Crusaders built the new entrance to the Holy Sepulchre Church, they made it a double doorway. As you can see, the, the Ottomans bricked up one side of it because it's much easier to take tickets from people if they're only going in and out by one door. <clears throat> that was purely the reason why it happened. And these doors are surmounted by beautifully carved lintels from the Crusader era. But over time, the soft stone of these lintels was damaged by weather, by pollution. And so eventually they were removed carefully and placed in a museum, which on the one hand is a good thing because it means that it's easier to see them up close. This is the one on the right above that closed western bay of the door. And you can see it shows a very magnificent vine. And it appears beautiful until you look more closely at the human and animal figures that are entangled in the vine. They're being squeezed by the vine. They're imprisoned in its tendrils. And it was through this side of the double doorway that pilgrims entered the church. And then they would make their way around the Golgotha Chapel, the other memorial chapels to Christ's Passion, around to the tomb, and then they would exit the church through the eastern door. And as they came back outside into the world, they would pass underneath a lintel that depicted the healing power of Christ, the entry of Christ into Jerusalem, and other very beautiful things. And the final panel showed the Last Supper. All of the disciples arranged next to Christ with the exception of one figure, the figure of Judas, who is at the moment of reaching across the table to receive from Jesus the morsel dipped in the dish. So you have two doors, two choices. One can remain ensnared in the vine of the world. One can remain caught in the damage that we all suffer and the damage that we all do. One can then enter the church and through an encounter with the crucified and risen Lord, seize the opportunity to sit with him at the table. Or one can choose to be on the opposite side and to reach across for the sign of his favor and then use it to betray him. Two doors, two ways of being choices, and the crucified Christ as the deciding factor. So Armenians also subtly built these two doors, these choices into their architecture. And of course, they added other layers of meaning to it as well, because that's what they do. So here at Sanahin, this double doorway of the Kavi puts the person who is entering this space or leaving this space in the position of choosing on several levels. When you think about the crucifixion scene, there are three crosses. Yes, there's Christ in the center. So you have that window of light up above. But that for this moment is not the most important feature. The most important feature is the two doorways to the side, the two placements of the crosses to the side. You have the penitent thief on one side, the impenitent thief on the other. 
And so as you think of that scene, through which of these two doorways would you prefer to pass? If that's a little too much for you, <laughs> you can also think of Mary and John who were depicted at the crucifixion standing on either side of Christ. So when you leave this church space, with which one of them do you identify at this moment in your life? Are you like the mother of God, grieving a terrible loss while at the same time bowing to the beautiful will of God for human salvation through your own suffering? Or are you more like John? the beloved disciple who at the moment of losing his Lord also acquires the responsibility of replacing him. As Jesus says to him, behold, she's your mother now. Church of St. Guyane offers a similar pattern to people who are entering or leaving this memorial to one who mentored the founding mother of the Armenian church, St. Hripsime, to her martyrdom. It's possible to also look at this as a Trinitarian statement. You have three doorways below, you have a, one, a single window above. Also a possibility, and they are not mutually exclusive. And wherever there are three bays as there are here. You have the church door in the center, a door to the left, and what probably originally is was a door to the right. Or wherever you have three altars, which is almost every Armenian church, this iconography of the cross and human choice is present, sometimes subtly present, or <laughs> as at Gerhardt, not subtle at all. In that famous rock hewn chapel, the cross in the middle, you can't miss it. With all of its layers of decoration, the door to either side. By the simple fact of entering that space, or even if you don't enter that space, you make a choice either physically or mentally. Which thief am I? Am I Mary? Am I John? Do I sit with Christ or do I use his blessings to betray him? What is my relationship to that central reality of the cross? Wherever we choose to venerate the site of Jesus' crucifixion, whether it's a garden, tomb, or a church complex, we bear in mind that Golgotha is everywhere. It's everywhere that the sons and daughters of Adam die. It's everywhere that people are changed by their encounter with the cross. It's every moment that we, by our own choices, choose our position, our relationship relative to the crucified Lord. 